Happy weekend, it's me, Larry Adeneko, welcoming you to the Really, Really Knowing God channel as I lead this fellowship of information and inspiration in the knowledge of God. Everything is being powered by the Pastor Larry Adeneko Center for Exuspiration, the PLACE. <laughs> This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of Jesus Christ. We are shining truth this morning on economic wellness, coming from 1 Samuel 25, 1 through 11. A word of prayer, and then we jump right into it together. Father God, we bless you this morning. Thank you for this weekend. Uh, we give you all the praise. Lord God, we ask that through it, Lord, you continue to manifest yourself to us and give us a fine weekend. As we study together uh, this morning, we ask, oh God, that you help us at it. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Okay, then. Um, 25 1. Then Samuel died. And all Israelites gathered together and lamented for him and buried him at his home in Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. Now there was a man in Maon whose business was in Camel. And the man was very rich and he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. And he was sharing sheep in Camel. And the name of the man was Nabal. And the name of his wife was Abigail. And she was a, wo a woman of good understanding and beautiful in appearance. But the man was harsh and evil in his doings. He was of the house of Caleb. And when David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was sharing sheep, David sent ten young men. And David said to the young men, Go up to Carmel, go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus shall you say to him who lives in prosperity, Peace be to you, and peace to your house, and peace to all that you have. Now I have heard that you have shared us. Your shepherds were with us, and we did not hurt them, nor was there anything missing from them. All the while they were in Carmel, ask your young men, they will tell you. Therefore let my young men find favor in your eyes, for we have come on the feast day. Please give whatever comes to your hand to, uh, to your hand to your servants and to your son David. So when David's young men came, they spoke to Nebal according to all these words in the name of Judah and waited. Then Nebal answered David's servants and said, Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays who break away each from each one from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my meat that I have killed for my sharers and give it to them to men when I do not know where they are from? <laughs> okay then. So that's why we're stopping this morning. We're going to continue with the story later, but let's share what we can from this uh, 11 verses. So Samuel died, and Israel, Israelites gathered together and lamented for him and buried him in his home. And then David rose from the, from the uh, wilderness of Meon, moved to yet another wilderness, parent this time around. But you see, we learned something from here. They said, then Samuel died. I want us to notice something here. The other time, <clears throat> when Samuel and Saul had an encounter, you know, uh, the Bible says that and Samuel never went to see Saul again till the day of his death. Now, this is the death of Samuel that we are talking about here. Did you know that Saul also never went to see Samuel till the day of his death? Now, Samuel did not go to see Saul. Saul also did not go to see Samuel. Ten chapters. This was chapter 15. Ten chapters after that, Saul never went to went to Samuel. I mean, yeah, what level of defiance? If an elderly man, a man of God, the person who anointed you into office, the person who prophesied a lot of things that happened altogether in your life, the person who has been, um, let's say, for you, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof, the person, you know, this man, for some reason, he wasn't happy with you and he stopped coming to see you. The person who briefed you, who spent the night with you, who did this, who did so many things. Well, he now got a little bit angry at you and then did not come to your house. And then you did not go either because you were king. That's some, some foolish kind of defiance that people can come up with from time to time. That was what happened to Saul here. He was just foolish in his defiance. You know, somebody of that, um, of that uh, kidder, you know, um, chose not to go to his house anymore because he was not happy with him. Ah, then Saul too, for some <laughs> funny reason, he also never went back there. You know, it's, it's a foolish thing. Can you remember that Eli did something like that too when um, um, the boy Samuel gave him the message of the Lord? He said, it is the Lord, let him do as he pleases. Some foolish defiance. You know, what are you going to gain from that? 
We find 10 whole chapters. Saul never went back to Samuel. Rather, he was busy chasing David and, you know, doing all kinds of silly things. I think we learn something from there. You do not need to be that defiant. You do not need to be, to, 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 to just shrug your shoulders and, and behave as if, well, so what? You know, no. Or because of some position that you have now attained, you now forget certain other things. You don't, you don't do things like that. The man was angry with you. Okay, uh, there's a way you could still go. I know you are not happy with me. Still forgive me. Still pray for me. Please, please still guide me please still do this i know you will not come to my house again but i will keep coming to your place that's a good one you know and he could have you don't know whether god could have seen it and said look at his humble heart and done something for him he was just some just defiant some foolish one uh, god help us in jesus mighty name all right then and then we go to the story of uh, a very very interesting man um in meon meon was the the place david was last and then he moved to another place he just got to hear that ah this man was throwing a party Okay, you know, it was, um, let's call it, you know, at times some of these big companies, they celebrate their distributors, you know, once in a year, something like that. It was something akin to that. He was celebrating his sharers, he was celebrating his distributors, you know, so something like that. And um, it was a time of feasting. So David also sent, ah, we learned that you are, you are celebrating, you know, you're just reader. please remember also, you know, and send uh, your son something, you know, that was it. All right. That's the story now. But before we get to that, it said the man was very wealthy. He had uh, 3,000 sheep, 1,000 goats, and he was sharing sheep. And the name of the man was Nabal, the name of his wife. The woman was a, was a woman of good understanding and beautiful in appearance, but the man was harsh, brash, and evil in his doing. How come they ended up you know, getting married to each other? A beautiful woman of understanding, a man that he had money, but he was uh, foolish and harsh and, um, yeah, in, in his own ways. How come they ended up getting married to each other? You know, these things happen. Or peradventure she married because of money. Or peradventure she hoped she, would, she, could, she could change him. I don't know. But how did they end up together? Oh, somebody says, well, well the opposites attract, don't they? <laughs> you know, uh, things that I don't understand. How come this woman ended up with a man as foolish as this, you know, and all that. But, well, that was what happened it could be for so many reasons how she ended up you know getting married to her adventure her father was owing the man a lot of money and he had no choice but say the only way to say to so marry your daughter i don't know but she ended up with a foolish man may god help us in jesus mighty name be careful who you marry don't marry a foolish person praise the lord all right then and then david got to hear and he sent word to him that please uh, since you are celebrating, please remember uh, us at this point in time. We were with you. If you remember, we actually took care of your people. We never, you know, took anything from you by force. Rather, we actually supported you and protected you from uh, rustlers and and things like that. Please remember us and send something uh, to us. That's what happened. But before then, okay. There's a little scripture. I just say something about it in person, and then we move on. It says he was of the house of Caleb. What a very beautiful place to you know to, to hail from from the house of caleb but believe me your ancestry may not matter if you choose to live a foolish life it's your own cup of tea the fact that he was from the house of caleb did not matter here at all the man was just something else god help us all so he refused to um respond to uh what david what david wanted rather i spoke harsh words to them okay and um <clears throat> he went on and said uh um, who is David and who is son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays who break away each from his master. Shall I take my bread and water? You know, just was very, very rough, you know, uh, towards them. And I see one or two things that uh, we can learn from here. One is that this man never expected, he never saw any future in David. And that's what happens at times. So, you, so the way we deal with young people, we don't see a future in them. We treat them shabbily. And, you know, the, some of these young people that you treat shabbily may now end up becoming a governor, may now end up becoming a president. Never uh, berate, never underestimate a young person. You don't know how it's going to turn out at the end of the day. He never saw any future in David. And that's why he spoke the way he spoke. I, who are you? Who is David? Who is your father? Uh, you know, for, from time to time, you see these people break away from their master and then things are not fine for them. They begin to now beg for, for, for so what nonsense. That was the way he never saw any future in David. I want us to say something to all. We must be smart, honestly. We must see the future in people and we must appreciate that these are the future and they relate to them as such may god help us in jesus mighty name okay now again it wasn't that david um david was trying to gather things you know to improve um 
their personal economy <laughs> that's what it, the economy of his little group he was trying to make sure that things are okay things are fine for them it wasn't because that they were really lacking or anything oh this was a good occasion you know to get some stuff so he said look let us improve our economy let us improve our store you know that's what david wanted to do <clears throat> and that is one of the big duties of a leader a leader must pursue economic well-being it's of his people. This is very, very important. He must pursue economic well-being of his people. That is great. Honestly, I want to talk about that this morning, really, because it's actually our our, our title, economic well-being in a leader. Uh, maybe it's in just in your family. You must pursue economic well-being for your family. But adventure, you are just you belong to maybe a church as a leader. You must pursue economic well-being of your church. Um, what else now? Your society. That's the duty of a leader. Pursue your economic well-being and a state, a nation, as the case may be. It is one of the primary responsibilities of a leader to pursue the economic well-being of your people. That is very, very important. That was what David was after. Hey, a young man, look, go and um, see to this uh, man, uh, to see to this uh, thing so that we can improve our storehouse. We can build up on what we have. We can, you know, uh, that's just it. Economic well-being is very, very important right from family in the community you belong to and you are the leader you have a responsibility to do something about their economic well-being right up to the nation okay uh it is very very important and may god help us while we make attempts at that in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ and so we found out that that man now went around you know really talking and saying all kinds of things uh uh to david and his people we're going to come back to that you know uh the next time we come here but for now let us know that it is important for us to let the spirit of god guide us in all that we do oh the fact that maybe um somebody who was your own servant or even three five seven of them they've misbehaved they left you in a way you don't like and they misbehave that does not mean you should write everybody off and say that's the way these people behave it's not a, that's something people often say oh that's the way they behave i have one that behave like that i have three that be that's the way they behave you don't do use things like that to judge everybody else the fact that you had that bad experience does not mean you should use that to cast that eye upon everybody else please may the spirit of god guide you in all the things you decide and the things you say in the mighty name of jesus christ it's a wonderful weekend and i wish you to continue and have it all great bless you